The overhand knot is generally tied as a stopper knot, but is a useful component for building other knots as well. It's one of the most simple knots that you can learn, and it's very easy to tie. All you need to do is create a small loop in the rope, and then bring your working end around the back side and go back up through the loop that you formed, and then tighten it up. And that is the overhand knot. Now as a bonus, if you know how to tie the overhand knot, then you automatically know how to tie the half hitch. So basically we're gonna take an overhand knot and we're gonna tie it around an object. And when it's tied around an object, that becomes a half hitch. So this is your half hitch. It can be formed in this way, or you can kind of bring this in down and form it like this and tighten it up. And that is also a half hitch. Now the half hitch in and of, in, uh, in and of itself is not a very secure knot. In fact, it's not secure at all, but it is a useful knot for securing the ends of other knots. So I'll show you with just a little bit of movement, you can pull the half hitch right out. But when we go to tie other knots by adding in a half hitch at the end of our knots, it will make those other knots a lot more secure. Cheek bend is a bend knot used to tie two different lines together. The benefit to the sheet bend is kind of twofold. First of all, you can use it to tie larger diameter rope to smaller diameter rope, which is not always true of all bend knots. And it is especially easy to untie after it's been loaded, especially when you tie it in its double or its triple form. To tie the sheet bin, the first thing you want to do is if you're using two different size of rope in your larger line, you want to create a bite. Then with your smaller diameter rope, you'll come up through that bite. You'll start working around this towards the side that has the bitter end on your rope. And you'll wrap around, completely around that rope. Then you'll lift up here and you'll tuck the tail underneath and then pull it tight. And that is the sheet bend. Now to form it in its double or its triple formation, all you have to do is take either another wrap or another two wraps. So if we go twice, tuck it back in, and then tighten it all up, dress the knot, that is the double sheet bend. And then if we were to go one more wrap, that would be the triple sheet bend. The slip knot forms a simple loop knot in the end of a line or the center of a line, and it's very easy to tie, and it can be used as a component to other knots as well. When you finish with the slip knot, what it does is provide a simple noose knot where it will self-tighten against an object that it's wrapped around. So to tie this one, all you have to do is turn a small loop into your line, then take that loop, we're gonna fold it over the standing end, and then we're gonna reach through, pull a bite of the standing end through, that's gonna form our loop, and now all we have to do is pull the working end and the standing end together along with our loop, and that forms our slip knot. Now the slip knot is kind of a bonus knot also because if you add a simple toggle to the slip knot, it becomes another knot. And we're going to use this piece of pipe as the toggle that becomes the marlin spike. Now this can be used for a variety of different things. You can use it as a handle to get tension on a rope to get a better grip. It can also be used if you think about two parallel lines with multiple toggles. You could make a makeshift ladder out of this as well. So to tie this one, we're going to do it just like we did the slip knot, wherein we're going to turn a loop. Then we're going to turn that loop over the standing in. We're going to pull a small loop through. Now instead of tightening this one at this point, we'll just set our toggle. And now we'll pull the standing in and the working in in opposite directions, dress our knot, and that forms the marlin spike. The bowline is largely considered to be the king of all the knots, and it's a very ancient knot. It's used to make a fixed loop at the end of a rope. Now this particular knot dates back, at, we know in history, to at least 4,500 years ago. It was found on King or Pharaoh Khufu's ship uh, that they found at the, at the base of the Great Pyramid when they excavated it in the 1950s. So this knot, I'm going to show you a couple different ways to tie this one. So the first way, we're going to come down the end of the rope about 18 inches, 2 feet. Uh, it just it depends on how big you want your loop. And what we're going to do is we're going to turn a small loop into the rope. Now think of that like you turn the ignition on your car, and that's how you form that loop. Now we'll take the working end of the rope, and we're going to pass it up through that loop. 
and then we're going to reach around we're going to take it underneath the standing end of the rope and then we're going to drop it right back down in the original loop and then we're going to pinch it off here pull on the standing end pull them apart and that will form the bowline that's the first method the second method is more of a speed tie what you'll do is you'll fork the end of the line in your between your two fingers and then you want to cross over this line in the next pattern and then in one motion you want to kind of flip this over and rotate your wrist and now that forms that uh, first loop that we were working with and it already has the line pre-positioned inside of that loop now we can just reach around send it right back through that loop pull them apart and that is also another way to tie the bowline and the last method that i'm going to show you is what's called the slip method so basically we're going to form a slip knot in this line so we're going to go down rotate and make our loop then we're going to fold that over our standing in and then we're going to pull a loop of the standing in through now we'll take the end of the rope and we'll pass through that loop and then we'll bring it back and pinch it on itself now we're going to hold this and then on the standing end we're going to pull them apart and when we do this portion will flip over and that will form the bowline so that is known as the slit knot method the alpine butterfly is a, a way to make a fixed loop knot in the middle of the rope now i'm going to show you a couple different ways to tie this one now this has the added benefit of being very easy to untie even after it's been subjected to pretty substantial load as well so the two methods to tie this one, let me get this one apart first. We're going to do what's called the wrap method. So with the wrap method, we're going to wrap it around our hand twice in order to form three lines. Now we're going to take the center cord and we're going to pull it up. And this is going to be what actually determines our loop uh, size. Now we're going to take this piece and we're going to go underneath the, the third cord. And then we're going to go over and back under the two cords loop around and then all we have to do is pull it apart and dress this knot up and this is going to form our alpine butterfly once you have it dressed there she is now the second method is what's known as the figure eight method so what we'll do is we'll take a bite in the rope and we're going to twist it twice in order to form a figure eight and I got that a little small, so let me make it a little bit larger. We'll do it twice to make a figure eight, like so. Now what we want to do is we want to take the top loop of our figure eight, and we're going to fold it down. So we want to kind of pinch it where it crosses here, and we're going to fold it down. Now we're going to take what used to be the top of our, of our top loop, and we're going to go under these two crossing lines and bring it right back up through the center here, and that will form our alpine butterfly. Now we just pull it apart, get it all dressed up, and that is the Alpine Butterfly. The clove hitch is a pretty common hitch that in and of itself is not a very strong knot. It's used to tie around an object like a post or a rail. Uh, it's not exactly strong because what can happen with the with the clove hitch is that if the if the line is subjected to a lot of load like i'm doing here you can see that that knot is starting to unravel a bit and i had a pretty long tail but if i had a shorter tail on it uh, it would tumble apart fairly easily so i can set that tighten it up but then if i start moving this line you can kind of see just how quickly that knot can loosen up and it can be very dangerous and so the clove hitch while it's an essential knot to know for other knots it's not a knot that i recommend tying by itself unless you put an extra wrap into it and i'll show you that as well so to form the clove hitch what you do is you start by going over your rail then we're going to cross over this way we're going to go over the rail again and this time we're going to bring it around and we're going to come up through this void that's left and now all we have to do is pull the standing in and the working in apart in separate directions and that forms your clove hitch now I mentioned before that you shouldn't tie the clove hitch or depend on it uh, by itself but you can make it a little bit more secure so what you'll do is you'll leave yourself a little bit longer tail and then you'll just continue this wrap around add another half hitch to it and that makes the clove hitch much much more secure than what it originally was because once it gets seated it will lock down 
and then it becomes a fairly secure knot. The spar hitch is one of my favorite knots. It's one of my go-to knots, actually. This is a, a hitch knot that's tied very similar to what the clove hitch is, but it's a lot more secure, and I'll show you why. Now, I have this one tied in the slip form, so this is the slip spar, which is how I'll usually tie this one. So to tie the slip spar, what we'll do is we'll start by going over our rail. Then, much like the clove hitch, we'll cross over. We'll go over again. But instead of coming up through the void, this time we're just gonna pull it tight and we're gonna come up over the top here. And now you'll lift up on what originally, if we'll look at it, this is our first wrap around our rail. We'll lift up here and we'll tuck the tail end of that rope underneath where the first wrap was. And this is what makes the spar hitch a lot more secure because anytime this line has pressure on it, it is pulling down and trapping the end of our rope or the working end or the trailing end of our rope and makes it a lot more secure. Now the problem with the spar hitch is that if it's under a lot of load that it can be kind of difficult to untie and for that reason I generally always tie it in its slip form. So to do that we'll do it in much the same way except instead of the end of the line going through we're going to send a bite of the line through and tighten it up and that forms the slip spar. So now, even if it's been subjected to a lot of load, I can still, with this tag in, pull and get it untied. The bunt line is another great hitch knot that becomes very, very secure, and it's really easy to tie. This is one of the benefits to the bunt line. Now, also with the bunt line, it is advisable to tie this in its slip form because much like the spar hitch, it can be a little difficult to untie if you do not put it in its slip form. So let me get this apart and then I'll show you how it's tied. So the first thing we want to do is we want to take our rope over our rail. Now what we're going to do is we're going to form a clove hitch onto the standing end with the working end of the rope. What we want to do first, we're going to go wrap around the back side and then we're going to take this wrap and we're going to go in between our loop and we're going to come out right here. And then when we look at it, what we have is we formed a clove hitch to the standing end. And now when we pull that all together, snug it up and tighten it, that forms the bunt line. Now, like I said before, it's advisable to make this uh, in its slip form. So what we want to do is, again, we'll start out, we'll go over, only this time and we'll send a bite through and we'll come, let me open that up a little bit so we see it a little better. Go around then come, ar come around the top, send a bite through, pull it, and now we have, basically we formed a slip clove hitch. And now we can pull it all together, tighten it up, and now we have the slip bunt line, which you can get untied very easily. The adjustable grip hitch is one is a friction hitch that allows you to make a fixed loop, an adjustable fixed loop, wherein you could tighten it up for stuff like uh, tying a tent line to it or a ridge line. Now, there are a couple of other friction hitches that are generally taught, like the midshipman's or the taut line, but I have always found that the adjustable grip hitch of those simple hitch, uh, slip and grip hitches, is probably one of the easiest to learn. So, what it allows you to do is that you can tighten it, pull on it, and it will grip along the rope and won't collapse, so you can add tension to it. But if you need to adjust the tension, you can move it forward or back and reset the size of the loop. But let me show you how it's tied. Let me get this one apart. So the first thing we want to do is we want to go around our anchor point. And then we're going to take our line and we're going to wrap around two wraps once and twice around our standing end. Then we're gonna take the final wrap and we're gonna go around both of these lines and then tuck it back in the form of a half hitch, tighten it all up, and that forms the adjustable grip hitch. Now, you can add extra wraps to this to make it a little bit more uh, secure, a little stronger. If you find yourself on a more slippery rope, just add a wrap or two to it and then finish it off with a clove hitch and you should be fine. Now, the last knot I'm gonna show you is a combination. We're gonna be using a combination of some of the other knots that we learned in order to tie the trucker's hitch. And we're gonna be doing a demonstration here on my workbench, just tying down some wood. 
So the first thing we need to do is tie our anchor point. And you can tie that with a variety of different knots. But because we're going through a ring, I'm going to tie on a bowline knot. So I'm going to do it in the quick method. Slide it through. And now I have my bowline. Now that we have the bowline or anchor point set, now what we want to do is we want to form a slip knot into the line right up close to where our load is going to be. But if we're going to use a slip knot, then we have to form it in the correct direction. So what we need to do is we need to rotate this, and then we're, instead of flipping over what would be the standing end, we're going to flip it over the working end and pull our loop through so that when this tightens, it's going to pull against itself, and then this loop won't close up. Now that we have our center loop set, what we want to do is we want to take our working end and we're going to go through our second anchor point and we're going to pull it together. Now what we can do is we can take our working end and go through our slip knot, pull the slack out, and now what we've done is we've created a pulley system in order to get more tension on this. So now I can pull on this line to get my tension. And then what we want to do is we want to pinch it off right here. And then we're going to just form a half hitch around here in order to lock this off. But you'll notice I lost a little bit of tension there. So I'm going to show you another knot as well that's called the automatic trucker's hitch and how you can get this a lot tighter than just the standard trucker's hitch. So we're going to start out much the same way. We have our anchor point. We have our mid loop. And now we're going to set into our second anchor point. We're going to bring that through and then we're going to tie it through our slip knot. And that's going to form our regular trucker's hitch. But now we want to go around it one more time. So I'm going to go back through the loop or through our anchor point. I'm sorry, pull that. And then I'm going to go back through this loop one more time. Now what we've done is we've effectively increased the amount of pressure that we could put on this by adding another wrap. And what will happen is when we tighten this, these two will interlock with one another and keep the tension on it so that we don't have to fight holding the tension and then tying our finishing knot to finish this off. So when we tighten that, you'll see how that flips over. And now if I release it, the tension stays on it. But we wanna get it even tighter than that. So what we're gonna do is we're going to use a toggle and we're going to take another one of the knots that we learned, which is the Marlin spike. We'll set our toggle through here. And now what we can do is we can use the Marlin spike to create a handle and get a lot more tension on this rope. Now you can see just how much more tight I was able to get that line. And because we're making it in the automatic trucker's hitch, it's holding itself until I have the chance in order to get my finishing knot or my, I'll tell you what, let me get that knot out of there real quick. So now it's holding the tension by itself until I'm able to put a slip knot in here to lock this off and we're gonna get it tight and we can throw an, or a, I said a slip knot, I'm in a half hitch. We can throw another half hitch and then it's locked in place and that is not going anywhere. Now to release this knot is actually pretty simple. So we'll just work backwards. First of all, we're gonna take our half hitches out of there, our locking hitches. And now because this line is kind of trapped under the other one, what we wanna do is we wanna take the end of our rope and wanna go back through our loop here in reverse, get it pulled. And then all we gotta do is give it one hard tug and it will release the tension. And now, we can take the rest of the knot apart. And because we used a slip knot in the middle, we should be able to just pull this and that knot will pop out. Now you can use a number of other midline loops. You can use an Alpine butterfly or there's several others out there that you can use in order to tie that midline loop. I just did it with the slip knot because it's one of the easiest versions to show. So these are the 10 most important knots at least in my opinion, that everybody should learn. I appreciate you guys watching, and I'll see you in the next one.